Homorki has it knocked away, recovers it. He's still going to try to throw into traffic. It's intercepted by Northwestern. The game is over. The Wildcats prevail. The Northwestern Wildcats 2017 season has reached the halfway point, and as the team prepares for visiting Iowa, Eric Jackson preps the team's helmets to pay homage to one of the great teams of Wildcats history. Led by Coach Ara Parsegian, the 1962 Wildcats climbed the polls to a number one ranking. This week, 27 members of that team plan a reunion at Ryan Field to celebrate their 50th anniversary. The helmets used on Saturday replicate those worn by Parsegian's Wildcats. And for Jackson, the process of recreating the historic look is done with precision and patience. The challenge of getting the numbers lined up evenly on both sides of the helmets is something that I, I, I kind of do like. Um, it's not really much I don't like when it comes to decaling except taking them off. The reaction of the guys and, and what people say about it is ultimately you know, makes everything worthwhile. Six for Iowa. Stanley scanning. Stanley is hit. And down he goes. Joe Gaziano, the sack leader for Northwestern, with the hit. Joe Gaziano of the Northwestern defense provided the early intensity. With no points registered for either team for the majority of the first half, the battle became that of field position. For the Wildcats to prevail, it would come down to execution. Alignment, assignment, technique. Face, feet, hands, eyes. Nothing changes. We'll adjust as the game goes along as we figure it out. Okay? But it doesn't matter. Let's go get after the rafts. All right, let's go. Akram's one lead. Leaning forward, but not a lot there. It's a third down and long. Miller again. Snap to Stanley. Stanley will swing it out to Wadley and tripped up. Beautiful play by Nate Hall. Another tackle for loss. Stanley to throw. Wide open touchdown. We're way too flat right now. All right, we got to start this half fast. Get across the 50, y'all. 
Everything on the field's got to be about finish. So all it's going to take is everything we talked about. Our game. First and goal, Northwestern. Larkin again to the fringe. Diving. Touchdown. Jeremy Larkin, the redshirt freshman. And now here's a hit of the sack of the quarterback. Down he goes. Stanley sacked by Joe Gaziano. His second sack today on the final play of the third quarter. Option right. And now back to throw is Thorson. Winds up, throwing man wide open. Skoranek at the 30, cuts inside 25. He's got a first down to give the Cats their first lead of the day. Here's the snap. The kick by the freshman to the uprights. And the kick is good. Charlie Coopander. Stanley looking, has time, throws the far side. Intercepted, intercepted by the Wildcats. It's J.R. Pace down the far side and Pace out of bounds. After the Wildcats clawed back into the lead, the Hawkeyes matched with three points of their own, sending the game into overtime. Let's go! Win on three! One, two, three! Win. Snap to Thorson. Rushes on. Thorson throwing. Caught by Jackson. To the 20. Makes a man miss. To the 15. On his feet. 10. To the 5. And down inside the 5 at the one yard line. It's a ballet from Justin Jackson for 23 yards. Find a way to get the ball to your best player in crunch time. It's that simple. Touchdown! White Thorson. There it is, fourth and three. Oh! Oh, man! We gotta be loud! Celebrating a second, but back to back wins now. How, how do you feel like the direction this team is pointed? We got some momentum. Got some momentum. Got to keep it rolling. That's all I got to say. That's it. All right, thanks, Tyler. Go celebrate. Congrats. Thank you very much. We honored a great team today. We honored a great man, great team and a great man. And I guarantee you, he's looking down on you guys right now, really proud, really proud. And I guarantee you, all those guys who were on that 62 team that came back to watch, and even those guys that couldn't make it today, you made them incredibly proud. That was one heck of a team battle. And you got to give credit to our opponent. That was a, like we told you it was going to be, a war, wasn't it? And that's how you grind that thing out. I mean, you go down to the end, and you want to talk about guys stepping up and making big plays. You want to talk about guys staying together. For two weeks in a row, man, I thought our offensive line imposed their will, man. Way to go. As Northwestern continues its journey through Big Ten play, it hasn't slowed the Wildcats' commitment to the community and their regularly scheduled visit to downtown Chicago. We go to Lurie Children's Hospital um, on the Fridays every um, home game and you know it's been an amazing experience coming here and being able to hand out gifts to the children, you know, brighten up their day. Today we planted pots, we decorated them and we just put a smile on their face and uh, there was even this one kid that he, he showed me some card tricks and I was blown away by them. Um, I really, like a lot of times, you know, I can understand the trick but I really did not get how this kid was doing these things and I was just, I was blown away. He was, he was so happy that we were here. <laughs> really it's not us giving to them, it's them giving to us, you know, giving to us this opportunity to make their day, you know, it, it made our day even brighter.
first year, Sam Dupe Miller has found success as a starter on Northwestern's defensive line this season, following the footsteps his older brother Alex walked just a season ago. I like really convinced him in, to like committing. I remember I was telling him like, yo, you should probably like go here. Cause like, I kinda wanna go there too. So yeah, cause he wanted to commit, but he wanted to like, yeah, I wanted to commit in person. I ended up calling uh, Coach Long ahead of time and committing. The Millers are not the only family with brothers who have donned the purple and white. Junior wide receiver Flynn Nagel follows his brothers, Aaron and Brett, while Kyle Cairo and Nate Hall both shared the field with brothers Cam Cairo and Jimmy Hall, as did senior superback Garrett Dickerson, who played alongside brother Cam. And Joe and Chris Bergen currently find themselves two lockers apart. Um, I took a, I took the visit with him actually on the junior day is when he came. Um, uh, he fell in love with the school and uh, through my recruitment, so did I. I sat there and was like, hmm, what other school would I think about going to other than Northwestern? And I kind of didn't, I, none of them really jumped out to me. Nate Hall, yeah. outside linebacker. Coach Fitz always preaches like family first. It's something that's kind of hard to explain unless you're in the locker room and like you feel kind of like the love of the program. That family atmosphere is felt and appreciated beyond the locker room. You would have to go out of your way to not be involved. So they do an excellent job and yeah we know uh, it's just so many people. We know so many parents and so uh, lot, all the families from freshmen all the way up to the fifth year senior. When I met Coach Bates and Coach Fitz and his family and Coach Long and his family, it's like, you know, you, I just, I mean, that's the right place for my kids to be. What really is the, was a game changer for us is just the culture of the kids, um, the students that play here um, and the families. And when you, you got the chance to talk to the older kids that have come to the program, it was just for us, for me, it was, that's what I want my son to be like in four or five years. As the temperatures in Evanston begin to drop, the stakes continue to rise in Big Ten play with the country's 16th ranked team, the Michigan State Spartans, visiting Ryan Field. Nobody's giving us a chance, man. Nobody's giving us a chance. No one believes except us. You need to look to your left and look to your right, and that's all you need, man. Come on, we've been grinding since January. Since January, we've been grinding, suffering, struggling. Please, sweat for each other, man. And if you ain't got the passion for it, please. Watch 403, 123, watch hard. That passion would be brought by redshirt first year Patty Fisher, whose performance would not go unnoticed. I think he's the best. Defensive freshman in the entire country. This is a young man that has outstanding instincts. That's how you respond. Let's go. Third down, Michigan State snap to Lewerke. Lewerke pocket collapsing. And he's sacked. Sacked for the first time today. And it's Joe Gaziano again. Force it over the middle. Diving kicks made by Lease. Snap to Thorson, gonna throw it once again. Got a man open, Dickerson, 20 to the 15, to the 10. Trailing by two scores, the Cats offense came alive late in the second quarter, aided by a critical decision on fourth down. Thorson pushes the pile, touchdown! Clayton Thorson on a one yard quarterback sneak. The snap to Thorson, steps up, dumps it off. Jackson, cutting back to the right to the 30, 35. He's got a first down, out to the 41-yard line. First down for the Cats. Here's Thorson throwing down the middle, caught at the 20, and a first down. This time it was Skoranek again. Connecting on his eighth straight field goal, first-year kicker Charlie Kubander even the score going into the half. You got it. Let's go. Good job. Good job, boys. Nice job. Come on, man. Go quickly, quickly. When we woke up, we dominated. When we woke up, we got after the refs. No 
Now let's get out of this locker room right now, get warmed up, get a look in our eye, and go finish the job! With the defense in control, the Cats' offense, led by Clayton Thorson, continued to successfully move the ball. The left side wide open, 45-50 down the far side of the 40. But early in the fourth quarter, Northwestern would turn to a familiar face to step up in an unfamiliar role. Jackson's going to throw, end zone! Touchdown! Skoronic! Justin Jackson on the option pass to Bennett Skoronic. And the Wildcats take the lead for the first time today. A final push from Michigan State tied the game, and for the second straight week, the Cats would face overtime. Wilson wide left, Skoranek to the short side of the right. And Thorson a pump fake. Now Thorson going wide open, Cam Green, touchdown! All by himself, 14-yard touchdown pass in two plays. The Wildcats have regained the lead here in overtime. A pair of touchdowns from the Spartans left the Cats needing a trip to the end zone to stay alive. There's the snap to Thorson. Looking right, man wide open at the 15 to the 10. Spinning down inside the five yard line. And Thorson will give Justin Jackson straight ahead, plows to the goal line, touchdown! Justin Jackson with a quick burst up the middle and the Wildcats find the end zone again, and now the extra point will send us to a third overtime. It appears as though they are telling the Wildcats to beat them with the pass. Thorson has Nagel. Flip Nagel stumbling into the end zone. Nagel outran the defense. Oh, he had a guy right on his heels. Flynn Nagel, that was all will to win right there. He did have that guy trailing on top of him, but he just outran him. After converting offensively, the stage was set for the Wildcat defense to put an end to a thriller for the ages. Second and 10 Michigan State here in overtime number three. Lewerke looking, pocket collapsing, stripped to the ball. It's loose, now Lewerke picks it back up, rolls left, now he heaves it downfield. It's gonna be jump ball at the goal line. Intercepted, intercepted by the Wildcats. Intercepted by Nate Hall. The Wildcats win. The Wildcats win. Unbelievable, the Cardiac Cats. In triple overtime, have knocked off the 16 Red Spartans. And this ball game is over. I've been waiting for this for three years. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and making perhaps the interception and the catch of his career. Now, earlier in this game, you suffered a pretty bad injury to your hand. How many stitches did you end up with? Uh, 25 to 30 stitches. Uh, our medical staff did a really good job of getting me in and out, and I was able to play uh, you know, out of halftime. I think I was only out for the last eight minutes of the first half, so, you know, they credit to them, they did an incredible job. I mean, what's this feel like? Right, this is Big Ten football, and, you know, this is what I came here for, this is what we all came here for. Um, you know, this is this is what we train for. This is what we work so hard in January for. And, uh, you know, it's not surprising that we came out with the victory. Well, congratulations on a big win, man. Thank you very much.
Now, like I said to you guys a month ago, if we keep grinding, we will get the return on that investment. Oh, you guys have been grinding, and we're getting the return. We got a big road test and a great venue next week, but for a couple hours, let's go enjoy this bad boy. Yeah. 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 Yeah.